The X-ray spectrum. The discovery of X-rays at the end of the 19th century gave rise to a fundamental advance in medical diagnosis through images and in the visualization of internal structures of material systems. Today, their use is still essential in medicine and also in fields such as crystallography to solve structures from their images in X-rays and astronomy to discover, for example, black holes in the center of galaxies. We're going to dedicate this program to study the X-ray spectrum. In the second half of the 19th century, intensive studies on the conduction of electricity through gases were carried out. These gases were introduced into a vacuum tube within which were placed a positive electrode called an anode and a specially separated negative electrode called a cathode. The English chemist William Crookes discovered, using a tube he had invented, that when the gas in the tube was extracted and a voltage connected between the electrodes, an emission of the so-called cathode rays took place from the cathode to the anode. These cathode rays would be later identified as electrons by the English physicist Joseph John Thomson. Here we have an electron tube. It contains a cathode made of a thin wire filament, which is heated to release electrons. Those electrons going through this opening are accelerated to an anode of molybdenum by a voltage provided by this power source. In 1895, the German physicist Wilhelm Cohen Röntgen discovered that when the tube was in operation, a non-visible radiation emitted from an anode went through the wall of the tube and exposed a photographic plate. Since the radiation did not pass through bones or metals, when these materials were located between the anode and the plate, their profiles were registered. In this way, the human skeleton could be photographed and this radiation was soon used for medical diagnosis. The radiation could be produced by the electrons stopped by the anode, since according to Maxwell's theory, these electrons emitted electromagnetic waves with a continuous range of wavelengths. However, there was no evidence of the wave nature of the emitted radiation. This is why Huntington called it X-radiation, since X is the conventional symbol for the unknown in mathematics. In 1912, the German physicist Max von Laue suggested that if X-rays were electromagnetic waves with wavelengths of the order of Armstrong, they could be diffracted by crystals, whose distance between atoms were thought to be of the same order. Together with his collaborators, von Laue observed the X-ray diffraction by copper sulfate crystals. A detailed explanation of the diffraction patterns observed by von Laue from the X-rays interference when crossing the crystal was given a few months later by the British physicist William Lawrence and Bragg. This explanation allowed him to design, together with his father, the also physicist William Henry Bragg, an experimental method to select the wavelengths of X-rays. This method, known as Bragg Reflection, will be used in the experiment we are going to perform to obtain the X-ray spectrum, that is, to measure the intensity of the X-rays at each wavelength. Let us see how the experiment works. The electrons are accelerated from the cathode to the anode by a voltage in between 20 and 40 kilovolts. When stopped by the anode, the electrons emit electromagnetic radiation in the form of X-rays, some of which come out through this hole. The hole is connected to a filter that selects an X-ray beam in the horizontal direction. This beam is scattered by a sodium chloride crystal with an interatomic distance between the chlorine and sodium ions of 2.82 angstroms. These buttons will allow us to move two rods on a graduated scale. One of the rods indicates the orientation of the crystal with respect to the horizontal. The other, the orientation of the detector that will measure the intensity of X-rays at each exit angle. Choosing the exit angle as twice the angle of orientation of the crystal, we select the wavelength at which the intensity will be measured. If we call the angle of orientation of the crystal with respect to the horizontal theta, then the wavelength lambda is given by multiplying twice the interatomic distance d by the sine of theta. The X-ray detector is a Geiger tube, similar to this one. It contains an inert gas subject to a high electric voltage. When the X-rays strike the gas, they ionize it, extracting electrons, which form an electric current whose intensity is proportional to the X-ray intensity. We will measure the electric intensity in terms of the number of counts registered on this meter. Let's measure it. Let's hear it. Here we have a fully automated version of this experiment. We choose the acceleration voltage of the electrons. And we start to measure the intensity for each angle.
In these columns, the measured intensities are collected in counts per second at the different wavelengths in picometers. These wavelengths correspond to the different angles. One picometer is equal to one hundredth of angstrom. Let's see how they are represented graphically. The intensities obtained for the different wavelengths at different voltages of acceleration of the electrons between the cathode and the anode are shown in this graph. We see that, in each case, a non-vanishing intensity appears from a certain minimal wavelength that is different for each voltage. This can be explained by realizing that the maximum energy of a photon, which is an X-ray quantum, is the kinetic energy of the electron by the applied voltage. The maximum energy of the photon is equal to the Planck constant, 8, multiplied by the speed of light in the vacuum, c, and divided by the minimal wavelength. The energy of the electron is equal to the modulus of its charge multiplied by the voltage. Then, the minimal wavelength is inversely proportional to the voltage. We also observe that for every voltage, there are pronounced peaks of intensity for some wavelengths. These are characteristic peaks of the material the anode is made of, so that if we change the anode, the peaks disappear or other peaks appear at different wavelengths. These peaks can be explained by atomic transitions in the anode, which in our case is made of molybdenum. To visualize the atomic structure of molybdenum, we will use a Bohr model that we've seen in other videos. When an accelerated electron hits the atom with sufficient energy, an atomic electron at a lower energy level may be expelled from the atom, leaving a hole. Then an atomic electron from a higher energy level falls spontaneously to the lower energy level emitting a photon. Since the energy difference between the levels is on the order of kiloelectron volts, the photon emitted in the fall has a wavelength in the X-ray region. The pronounced peaks observed in the graphs correspond to the sum of the X-rays with the same wavelength that are emitted by both the electron stop by the anode and the anode itself when the atomic transition takes place. According to the Bohr model, the wavelength lambda of an electron transitions in atoms formed by a nucleus and a single electron was inversely proportional to the square of the atomic number z. This number represents the electric charge of the nucleus. The English physicist Henry Mosley modified this expression for X-ray transitions in multi-electronic atoms. To characterize the fall of an electron from a higher energy level to the lower level in which the electron hold had occurred, he introduced a coefficient, sigma, that takes into account the shielding effect of the nuclear charge produced by the electrons of the lower levels. Using this formula and the measurements of the wavelengths of its characteristic X-ray peaks, he was able to determine the shielding coefficients and assign values of z to the elements of the periodic table. In fact, the arrangement of the elements according to the atomic number and not to their atomic weight, as it was done until then, allowed to correctly place some elements, such as argon and potassium, in the columns corresponding to their chemical properties. In this video, we have analyzed the spectrum of X-rays, invisible radiation of short wavelengths. Although the high energy of X-ray photons of tens of kiloelectron volts can produce a large dose of ionization in atoms or molecules, which can alter the structure of human cells and cause organic damage, the benefits of the use of X-rays make them an essential tool in medical practice, industry and scientific research.